Okay, good evening. Uh, I'd like to call the October meeting of uh, Town Council to order. And first, I ask for a motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Councillor Tower, <coughs> seconder. Councillor Finney. Question? Question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Okay, we'll move on to the question period. Um, Uh, Brian Lane, I guess these questions are probably the first ones for the clerk. I've noticed the, the format for reporting the minutes seems to have changed slightly. Uh, for instance, the, the minutes you're going to look at from last month's meeting, it says uh, you know, Sharon Hicks asked if there was an initiative, and it says somebody responded. So my question is, what are the official minutes? Is it these written minutes that don't say what the question was or the answer? Or is it going to be the video minutes from now on? Because these written minutes don't tell you what's what's gone on if you didn't see the uh, the video. Thank you for your question. The minutes, uh, the written min minutes, are the minutes that are adopted by council at the next meeting. So the written minutes are the official minutes of council meetings. So shouldn't the minutes be a reflection of? perhaps the question and the answer instead of somebody asked the question and it was answered like if you didn't watch the, the video you would have no idea what the question or answer was for some of these well we try to follow the local governance act which is the business of the town of Sackville the minutes include direction motions uh, who's in attendance the date and the time Okay, I'll, I'll just give an example then, page three of what you're going to have in your minutes. Resident Sharon Hicks asked if there was an initiative in place to replace the Heritage Board. Senior Manager Corporate Projects responded. Uh, I have no idea whether he responded unless I watched last month's meeting. So how does that reflect what happened? I mean, yes, he responded, but the minutes, shouldn't they reflect what the answer was? Well, we've been doing these minutes um, in this format for several years now, and as I uh, just pointed out, we try to follow the Local Governance Act um, the very best that we can, and that is the way that we, we record our minutes. Okay. The next question uh, is probably for you as well. I noticed the mayor is absent again. Uh, is there anything in the Local Governance Act that says how many minutes and a councillor, mayor, whatever can miss in, a, in a, a session, a year, before there's any pay docked. These, these meetings are scheduled. I mean, when you, you run for election, you know what day the meeting's going to be. <coughs> I'll take that. Um, I believe the Local Governance Act says you can miss three consecutive meetings okay. before some sort of sanction. Okay. And that hasn't happened. Okay. Okay, uh, next question is probably for the treasurer. We have the budget sessions coming up. Excuse me, Brian, you yes, ask questions to the chair. I will. Okay, I'll give it to you. We have a budget sessions coming up, and there'll be budgets presented by each department. How do the budgets that the departments present, how are they uh, arrived at? Do they start at zero and build their budget every year, or do they say, this is how much money we got last year, we think we're going to get so much uh, because of assessments? Like, is, is there a line item? Do they start at zero? What, what kind of process is used? I'll give an example, we'll go back to the tourism budget. Seeing as that we used it for Border Town last year, would we be able to look at it and say, oh yes, we're going to spend X number of dollars to uh, print a, uh, a pamphlet to promote uh, Border Town to all our residents and there'll be a mailing cost. Would there be something in, in the uh, tourism budget for that that you could actually say, this is what we're going to spend the money on? Um, I believe the process is the uh, treasurer asks each department head to generate a budget, almost a wish list kind of budget, and then over this period of time they meet with the treasurer and pair it back to what we think we can afford. Um, it, it's a little tricky because we don't know what our warrant, our, the money we're getting from the province is going to be. So that's, that's a bit of a wrinkle in it, but it's just generally the process, I believe and say that you know this is what we think we're going to spend next year like 
you know, obviously salaries are easy to, to figure. You have contracts, you have con union employees, but, you know, every department is going to say, well, we have this to spend on this, this, and this, and we would like to do that. So did they start with a zero-based budget for each department, or did they just say, well, we got this and we're going to spend it? I think I'll refer that one to the treasurer. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So each, each year we start the process uh, where uh, managers submit their requested budget. Uh, they submit the requested budget uh, to the treasurer, uh, which they now have their documents as noted in my uh, finance report. Um, so once they submit uh, their requested documents, uh, their requested information, what they're looking for for a budget for 2020, 2021, and uh, up to five years for capital, um, we then meet uh, the treasurer, myself, the assistant treasurer, and each manager and review, uh, review, review each line item uh, and say, okay, why, why are you looking for increases or decreases to this? Um, and determine uh, where, why and what is, uh, is the request and, and how it is. We then pare that down uh, and present uh, as a staff level and then present it as a first draft to council. Um, once we present it to a first draft of council, uh, council has their opportunity to make opinions uh, and comments and suggestions and recommendations. Um, at that point in time, we are always waiting for information from the province, which is our tax base for the, for the next year. Uh, once we receive that tax base information, we're then in a position to finalize the budget and uh, present a uh, second draft uh, and or third draft if need be and work, work at it uh, as long as we need to work at it to get to uh, where we want, whether it's a no tax base increase, whether it's a tax base increase, whether it's a tax base decrease, and whether it's a change in, in position or direction that uh, based on what we've done in first draft or second draft or third draft. Uh, the first upcoming meeting on October 21st is an opportunity for the public uh, to make their, uh, their comments, suggestions, uh, and, uh, and thoughts known to council. Um, so anybody who wishes to present can, uh, can then uh, submit a request to the uh, clerk and are permitted to make a t up to a 10 minute presentation uh, to the council which will then just be heard into the record and uh, will be looked at and discussed uh, during our budget process. So are the line items from the departments, are they available to the councillors or is it just a top line number that they see? We, we don't see the, well, we can if we want, but we don't see the, uh, what's reported to us is not the detailed line by line items. Okay. Uh, we did that years ago and it was like six hour meetings and for no. That's what you get paid for. <laughs> okay, one last question. Um, it's a shame the mayor's not here, but it has to do with the CAO's resignation. Just trying to get a, a handle on the timeline on it. it you know, nothing was at last council meeting, but he, he may or may not have resigned before then. There's a news story in the Sackville Tribune that came online you know, on the Tuesday, and then it's in the print edition on Wednesday with quotes from councillors. Then there's rumors on social media. So instead of just, you know, want to ask, when did council find out? Who found out and when? Um, as I recall now, the timeline, that was the uh, CEO informed the mayor that he was going to resign. The, um, they decided that they would tell the senior staff first because they're the ones that directly report to him. <laughs> and then I believe that was, um, we got kind of distracted. It was on a Thursday or a Friday. We got kind of <laughs> distracted with a major storm that weekend. And so when council convened on Monday, we, that's when we were uh, informed. I don't recall if we got an email before that or not. Um, CEO might, might what? <laughs> update me. <laughs> well, new on Monday prior to the uh, story on Tuesday. <clears throat> Your Worship, uh, you might want to defer this to uh, personnel members. Uh, I know that uh, the Mayor and Andrew, uh, uh, Councillor Andrew and Councillor Bill have discussed this, and uh, I submitted my resignation on my timing, and the Mayor dealt with it in the personnel accordingly, and I'll leave them to answer how they decide to deal with it for whatever reasons. I think they were intending to bring this up under the personnel report. but Councillor Evans, can you... Add to this? Sure. 
Uh, the time, as I uh, recall, was that at our Thursday personnel meeting, we were apprised of uh, the CAO's intention to resign. He gave us a huge amount of notice, only required to give us two weeks. He gave us almost six months. Um, the, he, and again, this is his decision. He wanted to notify his senior staff. He chose to do so on Tuesday, and he notified council at about exactly the same time or moments before. Uh, but Tuesday it was now. So the members of personnel n knew about it beforehand. Uh, his decision for the timing <coughs> is up to him. I like the idea of not uh, stealing the thunder of our Monday meeting by having this announcement. It's a big deal. And so the choice, again, it's, it's the CEO's choice, but I certainly supported it. Let the meeting happen, make his announcement to staff when he wanted to, and, and at council at essentially the same time. So that's the timing. Uh, uh, and I, if, that, if that's your question, just the timing, that's the timing as I recall. If uh, the rumor was true that there was you know, a couple members of council who were informed the previous week and the rest of the council was left in the dark until the announcement was made, that was... Uh, the, there would have been the personnel committee that knew ahead of time. Personnel. Sorry. As is there, that's but, their job. But the rest of the council wasn't aware. Okay. The point is that every liaison councillor knows stuff before the rest of council, and we typically hear about it when we see the package or at a meeting. It's not as if it was a conspiracy. This is something which is very personal, not personnel, for the CAO. The timing was his. It's not as if he was making an operational decision and keeping it secret from, from council. That would be inappropriate. This was a decision about his resignation, and it shows, I think, uh, a, a, the relationship he has with staff, that he wanted to give staff the courtesy of informing them on his own time, and uh, he did so, and counsel at essentially the same time is my recollection. If I have a question, sir, to what the CEO did with his staff, it's up to you as a counsel to decide whether it's appropriate for two members of staff to keep something like the CAO resigning. It's, it's not like, well, we're going to pave a sidewalk. This is the CAO that's resigning, the senior staff member outside of council, and two members knew. So, I mean, I think it's inappropriate, but that doesn't matter what I think. Um, it's up to council. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Deputy Mayor and council, um, I have a question. I'm wondering if the town has ever considered installing video cameras at the exits outside of town. And the reason I ask is because in the last... Well, in the last two months, we've had the RCMP come to us at our store three times um, to help solve a crime. So there's been a wood splitter stolen, there's been a dump trailer stolen, and there was some damage done to a motel room. And each time our video camera system that we have um, has helped to at least get information, whether it's solved or not, but at least get information of you know what vehicle was hauling the wood splitter and what vehicle was hauling the dump truck and so on. And there's also been, um, there was also two other cases last December where there was a break-in um, on our corner as well, the, well, the glowing embers. And again, we used our video system to help to solve that. So in my opinion, I think there's some valuable information that, I mean, I don't think the town would need to sit and watch video of what people are doing or anything like that but there's definitely a safety and um safety issues in the town there was a, there was actually a truck stolen off of queen's road as well and those people came to see if that truck had driven like past our door yard through that evening but it had actually gone through dorchester um so my question is has the town ever considered installing video system i know we have them um at the rink i think they're inside the rink though not outside um yeah that's my question um, several years ago, we looked into installing them um, downtown because there have been a number of thefts, and it um, turns out to be, and I'm going back several years in my memory here, um, turns to be a, a quite a complicated and expensive problem because you have to know what kind of system you want, how many cameras are you recording constantly, are you recording at certain times, what happens to the recordings. Um, there's lots of sort of legal implications. It's not just putting up a camera. You put up one up in your business. That's your business. But out in a public street, um, there are, as, as I recall, other laws and, and considerations that come into it. 
Um, so yes, we've looked at it. Um, it gets to be expensive. I don't know if it's ever, we just said absolute no to it. Um, but uh, were you involved in that, Dwayne? No. Um, have cameras as well, right? Like there's lots of highway cameras you can log on and see what the weather is and that kind of stuff. That's not why we need them, but I just think for safety and th there's a lot of theft going on in town right now, which I'm sure you guys are aware of, but mm -hmm. there's a lot everywhere. And I just think if we had them at the exits to town, so if you had one at 506, one at 504, probably one somewhere on Queens Road, maybe King Street, I don't know. There's, there's only so many ways you can get out of town, right? That you'd have to drive by. Um, anyway, something to consider. I know budget season's coming up. Um, maybe I can come and do a presentation, but. Okay, we can, um, we can take, certainly take it under consideration. Um, but again, I, I'm trying to think back when this was done. It was maybe six or seven years ago. And you know, obviously technology's changed since then. So we, we can have a look at it. You don't have to save them for five years or anything. Like we only save ours for a certain period of time and then it just gets overwritten over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And it just gives you that. And, and there's lots of times too that, you know, with our store, for example, you know, somebody may drive away without paying, just forget to go in, get talking, whatever. And we've used it a lot of times, just, you know, pop it up on Facebook. Hey, does anybody know this person? And I get, you know, messages. Yeah, that's so-and-so. You make a phone call. Hey, you forgot to pay your gas. Sometimes it's not that they forgot, but you know, there's anyway. It's it's helped us a lot, and and it might be something to to help with security. Okay, thank you. And Bill, Bill, um, I, I'm really grateful for the question. I think it's a really good question. Uh, I know that the police regularly use uh, CCTV uh, that uh, private businesses have. One of the challenges, because I was on council when uh, the deputy mayor is referring to it, and. If you set up a camera in your, in your uh, place of business, you can connect to your Wi-Fi, it can be relatively cheap and how you handle it can be simple. If we're trying to do it in a public place, the technology is more challenging, more expensive. But also, times have changed. It's like six or seven years ago. So I was not as enthusiastic uh, six or seven years ago. Times have changed, so I don't think it would be inappropriate for us to look at this again. But it's a lot more expensive for the town to do it than for a bunch of individuals to do it. But I'm really glad to have the question to think about this again, perhaps we should reconsider it. Oh, sorry, Bruce? Um, Wendy, if I remember correctly, Mike Fox generated a report on that, if I'm not mistaken, and it was highly recommended that it was too expensive for the town to invest in at this time. Um, there also was a lot of pushback from residents saying, how dare you put a camera up and keep an eye on me? It's almost, I'm sorry, but that's exactly the way they came across, is if they were thinking, oh, um, you're catching me at something that I'm doing or that's not even wrong, or you're keeping an eye on me at all times. But uh, like Councillor Evans said, I think it's something we should seriously look at now, despite the cost, because it's something that I truly believe probably needs to be put in place. Um, and we can research to find out the cost and see exactly just how we can put it in. Maybe we can get sponsorship from some of the companies as well. So, but that's what I remember. Council, uh, my name is Shelley Chase. And my question this evening is with regards to the CAO's departure. Um, I understand, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Mr. Hanrahan is, is heading into retirement? Is that, did I get the information right? Or, or was He's there no specific? heading out of employment with okay. the town. That's I, fine. I just wonder because the, the way my, my question was worded, I was wondering, is it normal for a CAO to give 20 weeks, approximately 20 weeks notice on a position? Um, and before I asked the question, um, or before I presented the question, I did a little bit of research because I don't know very much about the tenure of a CAO. So I was looking into other communities and what is the status quo. Generally, if a CAO retires or, or presents their resignation, they're heading to another CAO position with another possibly larger community, um, or they're retiring, or health concerns or whatnot. But in everything I found, it seemed that the common upper management resignation time period was more like four weeks, maybe eight weeks at best, to give the town a chance to 
figure out how they were going to, to replace the position or, or manage in the meantime. So my question was, and, and I know Mr. Hanrahan has had a long um, public service history, um, so I'm sure if he's retirement or moving on, he hasn't done this without some thought and planning. Um, so I'm wondering what, how did this 20 weeks come? It seems very unusual. And why is it carrying into the next fiscal year? What a, what's the cost analysis for the town of carrying on that way? And is it in the best keeping with the, what the town needs to extend it that long for 20 weeks? I'm just wondering why that was decided so long. And what the I, I agree with you, 20 weeks is a very long time and uh, thankfully he chose to do that. Um, we have, uh, come, we're coming up on our budget season. His uh, resignation is effective February, which should take us through our capital budget and we'll be done with that for the next year. To bring in a, a replacement CAO or and four weeks is not a lot of time to do this. It's a very short period of time. Um, we've now started the process of trying to find a replacement. Um, that'll come up later, I believe. Um, and uh, it gives us a chance to get through the most sort of technically complex part of our year, which is the budget part. And then um, a new CEO, CEO can come in without the stress of that particular bit of activity and run into the, the spring and summer. The reason, the reason council decided then was based around the new budget. Is that why he's staying on 20 weeks? It's just No, again, that wasn't council's decision, that was his. It, okay, so then my, my second question is that, is, is it generally the CAO who decides after you submit your resignation in upper management, usually it's the council or the organization you work for that sets the term of the resignation. 20, 20 weeks is unusually long for a CAO. And I'm just wondering how, when municipalities larger than ours do manage with up to eight weeks, what, what is the benefit to us in that process? And is there a fiscal implication by heading into the next calendar year? Are there additional things that we have to pay out by taking it over another calendar year? That's my question. Um, as far as I, I can see, no, the only thing we wouldn't be doing is paying. Essentially, you're talking about some overlap between CAOs. We wouldn't be paying two of them. Um, we, Pension contributions, are there things that by heading those, over two calendar years? That those are per, uh, personnel questions, I believe, that are mm -hmm. uh, not for public information. Okay, and council is aware that it is a long period of time to extend. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Okay, we'll move on. Are there any disclosures of interest this evening? None? Okay, I'll entertain a um, motion to um, approve the minutes of the council meeting of September 9th. Uh, moved by Councillor Evans, seconded by Councillor Black. Any comments on the minutes? Question? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. And. A motion to approve the special meeting of council on October 7th, 2019. This appears on page 11. The council, so moved by Councillor O'Neill, seconded by Councillor uh, Butcher. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Um, being as no business arising from the minutes, um, we'll move on to item 7 the South East Regional Services. Um, there was no meeting of the Regional Service Commission in September, so there's obviously nothing to report. This is a part of their scaling back of meetings to 70 a year to try and essentially save a bit of money. So there will be a meeting on, on October 29th, I believe, uh, the last Tuesday in the month. Okay, with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Pickford, who will tr has a cold and will try and get through this. But <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'll just kind of go through my staff report first. I do mm -hmm. have a public presentation on later on. So what I'll do is I'll do the whole uh, staff report first, then I'll ask for questions if that's okay with you, and then I'll get you to turn it back and we'll do the public presentation right. to end it. If that works. Mm -hmm. So in the month of September, there were six permits issued in Sackville. Um, this brings our year-to-date total at, to 53 permits at a total construction value of 5.5. Um, again, slightly uh, down in number and value, but more of a dramatic drop in value than slightly lower in the number of permits, uh, a bigger drop, but again, that's because of those large institutional and commercial 
and industrial projects that we had last year. Um, the Planning Review and Adjustment Committee did not review any uh, requests for the Town of Sackville in the month of September. Um, and other projects that were worked on, um, and you'll see there's also a resolution coming forward later on for uh, proposed changes to the subdivision bylaw. This is just a review of uh, housekeeping amendments for the, the subdivision bylaw and to update that into current uh, times. Um, there's also the uh, public presentation I spoke to tonight. Um, that's for the public presentation for the JN Lafford property. Um, as well, I did attend the New Brunswick Development Officers Association conference in uh, the month of September and did a presentation at that particular conference on the roles and responsibilities of the Planning Review and Adjustment Committee. Um, and part of that presentation also involved some best practices for development officers for when they're presenting to the committees and the types of information that they should be making sure is being properly relayed to the committee. <clears throat> and the other item that uh, we have been working on is the GIS departments continuing to work with uh, the town engineer on elevation data and verification of the, the LIDAR elevations and that's in anticipation of potentially updating our flood mapping in the, the near future. So that concludes the staff report. If there's any questions on that. Any questions for Ms. Bickford? No? Okay, then we'll move on to the public presentation of the, um, to amend the town municipal plan featured land use map and zoning bylaw. And this appears on page 16 of the package. So under the Community Planning Act, when the town is considering amending the municipal plan, they are required to hold a public presentation. And the public presentation is essentially the statement that the town uh, is formally making regarding the, the change to the, to the bylaw. In this particular case, because it's not only triggering a municipal plan amendment, it's also triggering uh, zoning bylaw amendments. And more specifically, it's to... Um, to change zones on a couple properties as well as uh, a text amendment. So I'll just kind of highlight that too as part of the presentation because it's uh, a larger project than just the, the simple um, future land use map change. So the proposal is for a senior housing community. Um, you'll see from the, the map on the screen, this is our future land use map. There are two properties that are included in this. Um, they're outlined by the dashed black line um, the proposal that's reflected in the municipal plan amendment is the area of the property that's outlined in red. So at present time, this property is designated on the future land use map as highway commercial. That particular designation does not include residential uses. So the applicants are proposing to amend this to urban residential, which would allow for the development of um, single level multi-unit dwellings as well as a senior nursing complex on that property. And that particularly is the one at the end of Wright Street. So you will see at the, the very tip where the road ends right now, that would remain highway commercial and it would be the remainder of the property that would be looking at being changed to the urban residential. The property at the end of Fawcett Street is uh, already in that urban residential uh, designation. So it requires no change to the, to the uh, municipal plan to do so. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the zoning regulations uh, are also being changed in this particular case. So the property at the end of Fawcett Lane would be looking at going from an R1 to an R2. This would allow up to six units per lot in the development. Um, and then the property that's being um, at the end of Wright Street is being proposed to change from highway commercial zoning to R3, and again, that's a portion of the property. The bottom would remain the highway commercial. Um, the, pro uh, the map on the right-hand side is conceptual only, but it is identifying those areas, the bright blue being um, the uh, multi-unit dwellings. There'll be, there could be more than six units per lot, as well as the, the nursing care facility. And then that purple area is the R2, which would allow that up to six, lot, uh, six units per lot. Um, you'll also notice that there is uh, proposed road networks that would be um, incorporated into this development as well. 
And then the final change that would happen in order for this to, con to go through would be a text amendment to add senior nursing uh, home complex to the R3 zone permitted uses. <clears throat> so as I've said, this is the public presentation. It's the formal announcement of council that uh, you're considering amending the municipal plan. Um, the ad has been submitted uh, and posted that uh, set tonight as that public presentation date and it has put out the initial request for comments from the public. Um, another ad has been placed, again, according to the Community Planning Act for the public hearing, and this is where the public will actually have the opportunity to come forward and uh, speak for or against the proposal. And the date of the public hearing has been set for November 12th at 7 p.m. in Council Chambers. And that concludes. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Bickford? Okay, so we have a motion, Councillor Black. I move that whereas council has considered repealing bylaw number 194, the subdivision bylaw, and replacing it with bylaw number 270, a bylaw relating to the subdivision of lands in the town of Sackville, a revised subdivision bylaw. Be it resolved that the council of the town of Sackville directs that the proposed bylaw be referred to the Southeast Planning Review and Adjustment Committee for their views as per section 110 <coughs> one of the Community Planning Act. Thank you. A second. Councillor Tower, a second? Sure. Any questions or comments? Councillor Evans. I just want to make a point because this time it's clear to me, but in the past it has been confusing. We just had a public presentation about a development and now we're having a motion. The two are not related. Just wanted to clarify that, that we're moving, we're moving on amending our subdivision bylaw. The fact that we've had a request about a development beforehand is not related. Just want to clarify that. I got confused last time. Any more questions? Sure. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Okay, we'll move on to reports and first up we have the mayor's report and um, the mayor sent this uh, report to me to give on his behalf. Um, what he's been up to in the, uh, first of all, in the media, um, talked to Global TV about the uh, flood threat to the town. Um, on the CBC radio shift program, he talked about resolutions we put forward at UMMB. And uh, in the Tribune, he talked about sending, uh, attending the CN Trees event. As far as events, at Mount Allison, he attended a homecoming flyover, the RBC funding announcement, uh, Cindy Blackstock breakfast, the Moncton Business Leadership breakfast, and the girls, it was a Girls Belong precipitant. Um, the mayor, along with several of us, was at the uh, CNE Legacy Tree celebration at the uh, VIC, at several events in Fall Fair, and um, dealt with the veterans' banners that are appearing around town. Other activities involved community-supported education, um, uh, the March to Engage program, 14 students met in Town Hall. Um, the climate strike attendance in the park portion he was, was at. He attended the Pride Parade. Um, met with a DTI senior staff member on several local issues involving infrastructure. And at UMNB, which uh, parenthetically will be reporting in detail next month, um, all the resolutions that Sackville put forward to UMNB were adopted, and we'll um, lay those out in some detail later. Um, the mayor also met with leaders of the, or leaders or candidates of the Liberals, uh, the Greens, and the PCs, and talked about um, issues important to town and local government. Um, attended a Green Waste at the middle school protocol meeting, and um, attended the Regional Service Commission Local Governance Committee meeting. On the mayor's behalf, I uh, gave a welcome to the Canada Japan Association at their conference in town at Mount Allison um, last weekend. So that's the mayor's report. If there are any questions, I'll try to answer them, but probably not. Oh, sorry, Bruce. Bruce? Yeah. Yes, Deputy Mayor, could you please tell me a little bit about the RBC thing that happened at the university? I worked there, and I never heard a thing. I don't know anything about it. Um, we're in the same boat. 
Thank you. <laughs> I guess I'm not the only one. No. There are some people are. If someone knows. <laughs> on the Pulse Council, if any. Um, the uh, RBC... Uh, <laughs> I, I saw a poster. Um, the RBC made a large donation to the university. I believe it's something like $400,000, and it's in support of experiential learning. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. The um, move on to the CEO report. Mr. Hanrahan. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, my report's in page 19 of the package, and uh, as noted in the reference to departmental reports, there's a lot of information with respect to the recent mayor's roundtable and climate change was held, the uh, CN and their 100th anniversary, and um, they're awarding uh, or providing uh, uh, support to us as part of their 100 Tree Legacy Grant program. Um, the fall fair programs re reference and again it was a huge success and uh, and I believe the fire department had uh, huge support as well from the community again which is great to see and so there's a lot of other details that I won't uh, mention but they'll come out during the report and there's a number of uh, operational uh, resolutions as well that will come forward uh, from the various uh, uh, liaison counselors on behalf of the department so that. If there's any questions, I'd uh, answer them for council. Yeah, if there are no questions, move on to um, departmental reports. Uh, first, Finance and Administration, Councillor Tower. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, the information for the bills and payrolls is on page 20 and 21, and where our treasurer has added some more valuable information in the bottom. I don't know much more he could add to it. If there, is there any anomalies you would like to talk about or nothing? Excuse no. me. Um, I think we should probably make a motion first, then talk about the It's just the on the report. report. It's got nothing to do with otherwise. Oh, okay. So I'm just giving that part. So you're just filling in the background. That's all. But he, he has no concerns. And I, with the extra information we have there, it fills in the blanks quite well. So thank you for that great change. So, the motion. I move that Council accept the bills and payroll for the month of September 2019 as follows. General Government, $574,637.85. General Capital, $207,816.31. Utility Government, $14,562.70. Utility Capital, Capital, uh, $13,187.76 and salaries of $218,122.58. I have a seconder. Uh, Councillor <laughs> O'Neill. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? No. Call a question. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Moving on, we have the uh, finance report, which is on pages uh, 22 all the way to 29. The financial statement includes the end of September 2019. Uh, we are still on target overall budgets uh, within the general and utility operating, uh, as well as the capital budgets. As we begin the 2020 budget process, uh, managers have their documents and are preparing them, as our treasurer mentioned earlier tonight, for the first draft of operational and capital budget. The public meeting will be held on uh, October 21st, next Monday night, where the individuals uh, can give a 10 minute presentation on the 2020 budget and, uh, and what we should or should not include in our 2020 budget. Individuals wishing to present are to contact the town clerk uh, by September 16th, uh, 2019, to be placed on the agenda. The Regional Service Commission budget was forwarded to town on September 13th, 2019, for solid waste, local planning, regional planning, and the regional development, or RDMO. Uh, you need to fill in the blanks on that one, if you would. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, tourism uh, component of the uh, of it. Um, one one point to note in your previous paragraph as well is uh, uh, individuals must uh, contact the town clerk by October 16th, which is tomorrow. You had noted September 16th. <laughs> Good question. All right. Uh, a motion will be presented tonight uh, to renew our agreement with the uh, service New Brunswick, who will who provides the online payment process for accepting our bills. Uh, water bill payments online. Uh, the renewal is for a three-year period. A uh, request was made uh, at the previous council meeting uh, as to how much our total invo invoices for Birch Hill construction was relating to phase two on the Lawrence Street project. The total expenses for Birch Hill construction was $1,997,000. $697.17, including HST. On December 10th, 2018, and on the April 8th, 2019, uh, Council authorized a total of $2,065,499.58. So uh, the, the total expense of $1,997,697 and 17 cents ended up with the 67,802 under the total authorized expense by the council. Water bills for the uh, period of July 1st to September 30th were read on October 1st, and we are currently working on sending out the bills which should go out this week. Uh, June 2019 shutoff doses were <coughs> issued to uh, 130 accounts with a total value of $69,299.26. To date, we have collected $57,887.79, so that's at the 83.4% of the total. No accounts have been disconnected. Bylaw students have now completed their uh, summer term, and we would like to thank them for the work that they have done in the summer and wish them the best in the future endeavor. That is Thank you, Councillor. Finance part. Are there any questions of Councillor Tower? For Michael. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You have uh, some motions. I do. I move that Council approve the service agreement with Service New Brunswick, SNB, uh, for the processing of various municipal payments with the term of April first, two thousand nineteen, to. March 31st, 2022, and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign and seal the service agreement. Our seconder, uh, Councillor Michel. Uh, ask for our treasurer just to give a little bit of background on that. Yeah, we've uh, we've been using them for 10 plus years, um, and uh, basically, uh, when somebody clicks on our website to pay online through credit card processing. Uh, it takes them to the Service New Brunswick website, which uh, which uh, makes the payment processor and then deposits it into our bank account. Uh, by using the Province New Brunswick Service New Brunswick, we're able to uh, uh, save on the discounted credit card rate uh, versus what we would ever be able to get that uh, that ourselves because of the volume of transactions that happen through Service New Brunswick, and we are one of. Uh, probably 70 to 80 municipalities that use Service New Brunswick uh, to handle their credit card online payment processes for water bills. Thank you, Mr. Beal. Question? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Okay. Councilor Tower. I move that Council authorize the allocation for the Southeast Regional Service Commission for the 2020 uh, budget years as follows. Uh, service, uh, solid waste services, $108,439. Local planning, $214,507. Regional services, $4,412. Regional destination marketing, uh, $3,589. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Evans. Any questions? Uh, I should point out here that if the, um, you'll see the local planning uh, fee or uh, budget for the service commission went up a lot. Um, it went up because Riverview has decided to take on their services. 
So Riverview is paying 90% of that increase, and the rest of the increase is divided among all the 10% among all the uh, other communities. So this is what uh, any increase we see here is, is from that. Okay. Uh, question? Question. Oh, sorry. No, oh, that was your question. Oh, no, that was your question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. I'll move on to tourism and business development and Councillor Tower. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I was actually going to say that the bylaw enforcement report is on page oh. 30 and the animal control report is on 31. So people can read that at their leisure and see the great work that is happening. Moving on to the tourism, which is on page uh, 30, pages 32 to 33. The visitors numbers for 2019, September 2019 was 1,972, compared to uh, 1,141 last year. A significant increase of 73%, uh, which we attribute to our highway sign, uh, tag signs, uh, general increase in visitors for the region, uh, and demographics of fall tourists which trends to uh, older uh, than not older people at other times of the year. And so they, uh, they go looking for information if they're going to be where the modern younger ones know how to use the Internet. <laughs> uh, local businesses who reported uh, to our survey generally indicated a small increase in business for September. So comparing the numbers from May to September of this year, Versus uh, last year, in 2018, we had 9,286 visitors, and this year we've had 10,243, uh, which is an increase of uh, approximately 10%. So, uh, you know, September really helped our numbers. Um, we are also pleased to uh, welcome Danielle uh, Balin uh, to our Visitors Information Center as our weekly staff person. Uh, the town staff at the Vic Center will be there until October 20th, and then the building will remain open until New Year for the Sacral Craft Gallery. The staff uh, continue our one-on-one -on -one meetings with the local businesses, a meeting the ATV, uh, Paul Branscombe in, in September, and Anthony Maladen, Malena of uh, Bagtown Brewery in October. Uh, there are more one-on-one -on -one sessions can, uh, planned for the upcoming months so as we get through all our businesses and make a good uh, connection. The uh, manager attended the Fundy Biosphere Board meeting in September uh, where summer projects, which I hope are next summer's projects, uh, unless you're talking about what did happen, and then future planning uh, were discussed. Uh, the department will be holding a, uh, holding a sponsored food safety workshop on October 27th. The town is subsidizing half of the cost of the workshop for local residents or those who work in local businesses. For information, go to sackville.com slash programs. Uh, staff will be meeting the, uh, province with the province in November about ways to improve uh, promotions for our a visitor's center since they no longer operate in in Allac and maybe part of that conversation will be try to uh, convince them to go back to Allac and realize it is an entry into New Brunswick. Uh, October 2nd, the department hosted a well-attended presentation at the Waterfowl Park. Uh, artist and residents Andrew Wilson on his summer project and an evening also saw a premiere of our new video, A Bird's Eye View of the Tantamar Marsh by Sandy Burnett and Anas Nans. Uh, the video has been uploaded to YouTube, to our YouTube channel, and will be shared on our social media and added to our videos at the Vic Center. And uh, it, it is quite an amazing video. I've heard lots of comments, uh, received a few. I even had a phone call from a gentleman in BC who met me at uh, Saltscape and he commented there that the town should do videos with a uh, drone to go over and should let people see just what is out there. And he said, hey, you listen. I said, no, nope, that was our staff, not us. So, so well done. And that is my report.
Thank you, Councillor. Are there any questions of Councillor Tower? Councillor Black? Um, <coughs> thank you. I just had a couple of questions. The Rising Tide program um, at Mount A, uh, when you attended, was, was that, sorry, was that you, Ron, that attended? Okay. Um, while you attended it, um, was there any talk from Mount Allison or with the program about how it might impact Sackville and the community with the extra money and the experiential learning? Is there any connection there to the community? And Thank you, Councillor Black, Your Worship. Um, the um, program was generally focused on uh, making the announcement, obviously, of the money, but um, they have been stressing a lot through their, all of their experiential programming, and they also did at this event, that they are really trying to place the students in um, situations where they can get um, on-the-job experience, but also will provide some sort of benefit to the organizations that they're working with, which could be the town or could be organizations in the town. And in fact, I have a, an experiential uh, learning student working with me right now uh, who's doing a great job helping me with various uh, parts of my uh, position, and I hope she's learning a lot about what goes on in the town as well. So it's, it's been a good uh, process for us, and I was glad to be able to go and represent the town at the meeting. Uh, with uh, the, the, it says staff will be meeting with the province about the VIC now that all is gone. Does staff mean you as well? Or, or is that going to be you that's meeting with the province? Or? Jamie and I will be meeting okay. with, uh, we're meeting um, with the woman who's the representative and some of her staff as well. So. And have you, sorry, have you guys discussed what you might be asking about with um, concerning that or talking about it, the strategic value of that VIC now that the all is gone or how that might affect the town or have you just if you had any thoughts about what you were going to talk about with the with the province at all yeah <clears throat> excuse me thank you uh councillor black um your worship um i guess all options are on, are on the table um i guess what we one of the things that we concentrated on this year was uh, our statistics which uh, we expected to show even a, a slight increase uh, in traffic at our center as a result of their um the Alac center being closed and, Obviously, that puts more strain on, on our own resources, not just uh, people being in the in the center to help uh, council uh, tourists and help them uh, on their way, but also some of the materials that we need to distribute and pay for. So, um, you know, what financial assistance is certainly something we, we want to talk to them about. Um, signage, we've, we've outlaid some expenditures this year to help promote um, our visitor information center and obviously uh, ho hope to attract people to, to our downtown. So. Um, those are some of the things that we're uh, we're going to be looking to discuss with them, and also the future planning, uh, you know, tourism on a whole. Um, a 40% cut to the New Brunswick tourism budget, an absence at a Saltscapes festival, uh, discontinuing the the provincial tourism guide. Those are all major, major, major uh, implications for us as a, as a smaller municipality for the tourism department. So it's really all going to be out on the table. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, um, we'll move on to public property and facilities. Councillor Finney or Evans? Councillor Finney. Thank you. Public Works Department continued working on the reconstruction project for University Avenue during the month of September. The street has been prepared for asphalt paving, which is scheduled for the week of October 15th. The street landscaping is currently underway, and we expect to complete the remainder of the topsoil, as well as the sod installation over the next couple weeks. Uh, the Public Works Department started working on the new concrete sidewalk project for Wellington Street during the month of September. The installation of the concrete sidewalk is scheduled to start the week of October 7, 2019, and landscaping and asphalt reinstatement will follow. The Utility Department installed a new water and sewer service for a new residence on Fairfield Road, as well as repaired several valve boxes and curb stops around town during the month of September. The utility department continued to work on the evaluation of water meters that did not read properly during previous water meter reads. They have worked through the month of September fixing and replacing water meters and or MXU units in order to obtain proper water meter reads. Mechanics uh, are conducting ongoing maintenance on all equipment and repairs for breakdown of equipment as well as they're turning around and uh, uh, winterizing the equipment for winter as well. Um, the engineering department continued to provide on-site inspection of the St. James and Bennett reconstruction project. 
the university avenue project and the sidewalk curb and gutter project on bridge street near exit five o six throughout the month of september these projects are progressing well and we expect to have them completed by the end of october weather dependent and of course we're working with windsor salt to do a bulk purchase for the 2020 winter season um, the pricing for the upcoming winter season has a minimal increase of 2% over last year's pricing. And a motion will be coming forward for that. The engineering department continued to work with Crandall, en Crandall Engineering Limited on phase two of the storm water mitigation project throughout the month of September. The recently completed phase two retention pond and related work has had several big tests over the last several months. The design retention fund is working well and has prevented flooding from occurring in the Lawrence Street and St. James Street area. The addition of a privacy fence along the service road walking trail between St. James Street and Crescent Street has been recommended to Council for the consideration. Quotations were received from two qualified fence installers, Eastern Fence, $28,360 plus HST, and Dean Welling, Welling Fencing, $30,000. $258.62 plus HST. A motion will also be coming concerning that. The Engineering and Corporate Projects Departments continue to work with Crandall Engineering and the Department of Local Government with respect to the EIA conditions for the Phase 2 of the Lawrence Street Stormwater Mitigation Project, as well as the requirements for a potential additional retention pond at the quarry and other related work as part of the Phase 2 of the CWWF program. The engineering department is working with Bowser Construction on the sanitary trunk sewer replacement project between Squire Street and Star Avenue. An initial startup meeting was scheduled for the second week of October with an anticipated start date of the first week of November. And the engineering department has continued to work with Liberty Utilities, formerly Enbridge Gas New Brunswick, on an updated agreement between the town of Sackville and the new owners, Liberty Utilities. We continue to work with Liberty Utilities with respect to an updated agreement that would be reviewed and presented to Council for their consideration in the near future. Motion will be coming concerning that. Now, the Tantamar Veterans Memorial Civic Center. The ice schedule at the Civic Center is filling up quick with most of the regular renters taking to the ice. Welcome back for another season to Cycle Minor Hockey, Cycle Skating Club, the Gents League, Cycle Men's Hockey League, 7 a.m. Adult Pickup Hockey, 9 a.m. Adult Pickup Hockey, Mount Allison Hockey and our public skaters. The canteen at the Civic Center will be open for all games and tournaments throughout the season. So drop by and have a snack or beverage and welcome back Marianne and her staff. Skate sharpening is still available and during open hours seven days a week. There are public skates Monday through Friday, 12 to 1.30, $3 for adults, $2 for seniors and children under 12. A family is $8. There are also public skates Public skates, most Sunday afternoons. You can check the Civic Center schedule on the website for a more accurate skating schedule as times may change to accommodate events and tournaments. The Municipal Parks. Fall Fair was another busy event for facility staff with delivery, setup, and teardowns in several different venues, as well as their <coughs> regular duties in all parks and the Civic Center. These tasks were carried out with efficiency thanks to the long hours put in by staff and volunteers. Thank you goes out to the organizing and planning of the Fall Fair Committee and pro Programming Department. Staff have installed the Legion banners which will remain up until November 12th when the Christmas lights will start to be installed. Part of the 2019 capital budget under beautification, staff have ordered four more Sackville bike racks and are looking to purchase four <coughs> more cast iron flux flower pots from Black River Casting in the amount of $10,005 HST included. A motion will be coming forward during this for tonight. Work on the Rotary Bridge and Dan's Way are nearing completion. Uh, staff will continue to monitor and maintain the parks in the fall on an as-is needed basis along with their duties at the Civic Center. The splash pad at the Bill Johnstone Memorial Park has been closed for the season. The water has been shut off in Beach Hill Park as well as Lila's Foster Park for the season. Public washrooms will remain open at Bill Johnstone Park for the month of October. There are other public washrooms during business hour which include the library, civic center, 
visitor information center, town hall, as well as portable toilets in the Waterfowl Park and Beach Hill Park. Submitted by Dwayne Acton, town engineer. Thank you, Councillor Finney. Are there any questions? Other report? No. I believe you have motions. I do, Your Worship, or Deputy Mayor. I move that Council approve the bulk salt supply agreement with Windsor Salt Limited for the 2019 2020 winter season in the amount of $73.37 per metric ton delivered for approximately 800 to 1,200 tons of road salt and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign and seal the agreement. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Evans? Councillor uh, Michel. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, just in regards to um, the supply of bulk um, road salt, um, I believe it was back in the spring I, I read something and, and kind of reaffirmed um, the other day that um, the province of New Brunswick um, had a two-year contract that they've put in place with uh, Nutrien Mine in Sussex as an effort to kind of assist with the changes that have happened in Sussex with the loss of the potash uh, business there. And um, in that article indicated that municipalities and schools, hospitals could access the pricing through that. Um, so I'm just kind of wondering if we looked into that uh, and if there was any savings or would there be any savings on top of the fact that we'd be supporting a, a New Brunswick company. Mr. Acton? Um, uh, we did not reach out to uh, Windsor or to that company. Uh, I was not even aware that uh, they made it available to other municipalities. I knew that the government was getting their salt from, from that. Uh, the last time we had got pricing from them, it was $99 a uh, ton delivered. Uh, and uh, with the uh, modest increase with uh, Wi uh, Windsor Salt, uh, we, we uh, recommended to stay with them. They've treated us well over the years, and, uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, delivery is, uh, is a major uh, issue for us, so uh, they've never uh, faulted us as far as uh, delivery goes. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Mitchell? I'm just wondering where we don't have that information is this something that needs to be approved this month? Can we wait till next month to, to at least understand um, if that option is available to us? Mr. Rector? Yep, um, that's totally up to council. Uh, we have about 200 tons of salt in our, in our uh, salt dome currently. Um, we typically like to get the salt uh, this time of year so that it's uh, typically drier salt doesn't freeze up as much, so uh, that's why we uh, are looking to try to get it in as quickly as possible. Uh, and of course, uh, we're getting close to that time of uh, year where trucks become uh, uh, difficult to get uh, because of everyone else wanting delivery of salt as well. So uh, the longer we wait, uh, that could be an issue as well, and that's again totally up to council. Okay, I'll just um, sort of straw poll. Does council wish to defer this until Another time, or just go ahead. I think I'd like to just so we can see exactly what the price from the other company might be. Councillor Butcher. Um, I'm all for supporting a New Brunswick municipality, um, but I hear what Mr. Acton is saying with the risk of waiting, and if we don't do it tonight it would mean a full month before we are able to make a motion again. Um, I, I'm not sure that it's wise to wait that long for something that we may find out is not available to municipalities or we may find out is not as good of a price as Windsor Salt. So I don't think I'd like to differ. Yeah, I, I'm advised we should probably have a formal motion if you wish to. Uh, moved by Councillor Michaud, seconder. Councillor Finney, comments? Councillor Evans. Um, I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone because I appreciate what Councillor Butcher just said and trying to get a, a good price is a good thing. Could we, could we pass a conditional motion and saying it's not going to take long to get a quote for salt and if you find out that it's, it's, that it's in our financial interest to do it, 
then let us know and we can do something else uh, sort of specially, but let's not wait a month for something that's gonna take a few minutes to find out. Is that a possibility? I see somebody I respect shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Councillor O'Neill. I think that. Oh, Sorry. Okay, I'll uh, I'll go ahead. I, I was just thinking that maybe we we know what we're paying would have to pay this year. I would suggest that we go with this year, but when we order our salt before ordering it next year, that we look, check into this and compare the two. Uh, I'd hate to see us wait and then just looks like. I'd say $73 per metric ton is delivered is a pretty darn good price. It's my suggestion. You buy your salt by the ton. Okay. Do you want to say something? Uh, CAO? I, I'd uh, prefer it if I could uh, direct the question to uh, our, our uh, engineer, but it seems to me that two years ago we were in a difficulty of, you know, of obtaining salt, and that was why we were... Uh, you know, Windsor Salt's been our supplier for a number of years, and as the engineers indicated, has treated as well in deliveries, et cetera. So I think that's probably part of his reason for not understanding that there was another source, because that's something that's really come online. So just be mindful, and if I'm wrong, I'd, I'd appreciate if you could uh, correct that. But I just throw that out onto the table as you consider whether or not you wish to defer. And on Councillor Evans' question around, uh, well, why don't we just see if we can reconvene. Reconvening's not something that I would recommend just on, you know, have another meeting next Thursday night or something like that because, quite frankly, the public has sometimes uh, difficulties wondering when we're dealing with issues, what nights, et cetera. And if we just pick nights, um, then nobody, uh, people have a, a more difficult time keeping track of when we're making decisions on certain matters. Not that you can't have an emergency meeting called, and yes, you can pass it that way, but it's not, it's not to me, the, the best practice. Any more comments? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor of deferment? Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Acton. Yeah, if, if I could, Your Worship. Uh, um, I wanted to just uh, add to uh, the CAO's comments because that's what I wanted to basically say is we, two years ago they didn't exist, they closed their doors. Now all of a sudden they open for, they're saying, two years. We, we jump ship and go to them and then they close the door in two years time. How, what's that gonna do to our relationship with Windsor Salt? I know if I was in Windsor Salt shoes uh, I would be pretty upset about that and we may not get uh, the same treatment uh, in two years' time when we decide to go back if they would even sell us salt. So um, again, I urge, uh, urge you to consider that as well. Uh, thank you. Okay, so no more comments. I'll call the question on deferment. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, so Duane, two years ago, this company that Councillor Michaud brought forward closed the doors Okay, thank you. That helps me make my decision. Um, I would prefer to turn around and stay with Windsor Salt then. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Deferment. Aye. All those in favor of deferring? Aye. Uh, Councillor Michel? All those opposed? Okay. Motion's defeated. Now back to the original motion. Um, We'll call the question. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Councillor Finney. I move that council authorize the mayor and clerk to sign and seal the extension agreement of the existing contract with Liberty Utilities, Gas New Brunswick, formerly Enbridge Gas, until March 31st, 2020. I have a seconder. Councillor Evans. Mr. Beal or Mr. Hackton. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Councillor Evans, uh, Your Worship. Um, yes, I, I had brought this, uh, I believe, last month to extend uh, the contract to uh, the end of uh, October 31st, 
assured that I was going to have an agreement to bring forward to council and uh, question them on at the time. But uh, irregardless, uh, they didn't get the agreement. Uh, in the meantime, um, Liberty Utilities has purchased Embreed Gas. Um, so we've gone back to them. Uh, there is no draft agreement that obviously was ready. Um, and uh, as I believe the CAO pointed out uh, last meeting, um, we had actually, they said they'd have it done by December 31st. We deferred that and said, how about March 31st? We're more comfortable with that. That gives you guys all kinds of time to put the draft agreement together, us to review it, council to see it and review it, and hopefully approve it. So uh, that's why we're back in front of council uh, looking to have it extended to March 31st, which Liberty Utilities have agreed with uh, and provided uh, an agreement to, to state that. Um, and that's uh, what we're looking to try to do is to extend it till then. In the meantime, we will get the new agreement with Liberty Utilities um, back in front of Council. Councillor Tower. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne, are there any changes at all to the uh, contract? Um, uh, we, do, we don't have the agreement and uh, we're not expecting any, uh, any changes according to the discussions that I've had with Enbridge slash utility uh, or, or uh, Liberty Utilities. Um, but that's why we want to get a, have a look at it and we will then review it uh, in detail to see what changes uh, they're proposing and they're, they've indicated that they will uh, indicate any changes, um, highlight them in bold and, uh, and bring that forward to us. So. Once we've had a chance to do that, uh, we'll definitely uh, have it in front of council. Councillor Evans? It might be worthwhile pointing out that we understand that lots of municipalities have these agreements and are all in the same boat. And I think we just found out recently that we've reached out to UMNB to see, um, you know, what's going on to sort of aid in this process. Uh, that is correct. Um, in fact, I've re reached out through this whole process to several uh, local municipalities and uh, they've even forwarded their agreements and it's identical other than the, the name of the municipality or city or town um, and depending on the dollar amount based on the size of your community. Okay, thank you. Any more comments, questions? Question. Call a question. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Mr. Deputy okay. Mayor, could I have someone else read that next motion? Because I'd like to speak on it, and I may be voting against it. Uh, Councilor Evans? I move the Council award the supply and installation of fencing along the service road slash walking trail of the retention pond to Eastern Fence in the amount of $28,360 plus HST. I have a seconder? Councilor Tower? Councilor Finney? I was just going to ask, uh, Duane, could you tell me exactly how this came about? Who came up with the idea of putting that fence there? Was it the businesses down there, or was it a recommendation from corporate projects, from public works and engineering? Um, um, it was uh, basically it was a combination of, uh, of a lot of various uh, people. One, the businesses. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, concerns from... Um, West Auto Clinic, um, Bowser Construction, um, both engineering, <coughs> corporate communications, all people working on the project as well um, because uh, for anyone that's walked that trail and looks um, to their right, uh, depending on which way you're going, you see the debris at the back of all the buildings and, and it was felt that um, a barrier there would, uh, would be needed. Also, as I mentioned last meeting, there's been a number of thefts um, of um, wheels, steel, aluminum, uh, you name it, uh, in the back of those uh, facilities. Um, people gaining access off that access road and that would deter this from, from happening. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna eliminate it because there's various ways to get in there, but at least not from the access road. Councillor Finney? Have the businesses um, been asked to contribute to it as well? Um, this was brought up last meeting and since then we've reached out to, uh, to them. Um, one of the individuals indicated that they're not willing to uh, contribute 
And the other one, I do believe we still have not got an answer on that particular item um, with respect to that. Uh, he has returned our phone calls, emails. Uh, we've talked to his staff, uh, but the owner has not uh, ever got back to us on that. Councillor Finney. The reason I'm asking this is because I think it's quite a burden to put on the whole price on the people of the town. Um, we know there's been thefts down there because it's been going on for a long time, long before the pond ever got there. And uh, they've done nothing about putting a fence up to help themselves alleviate themselves of that problem. And so uh, I find it hard to justify uh, putting out that amount of money. Um, and if they're like any other fence that I've ever seen before, if people want to get into those places to, for theft, they'll cut them. Just recently, Mount A had their fence cut in three different places to get into the gas tanks. So, and of course, up at the quarry, they've been cutting them for years. So uh, I just have concerns about it. Thank you. I, I think it should be pointed out, if I'm correct, that we pay one quarter of this amount, right? The rest is under the uh, infrastructure agreements. We being the town. Yeah. Councillor Evans? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to make two points. First of all, um, a lot of people have talked to me about this retention pond, and the only negative comments I've got from people since uh, most people are thrilled with the fact that it's a park and they're enjoying the waterfowl and the wildlife that's there, the only negative comments are, can't you do something about that ugly stuff? So in terms of, forget security, just in terms of this privacy fence, shielding that so that you, when you're walking along there, all you can see is the nice stuff on whichever side it is, depending on which way you're going. So I'm completely in support of this motion. And as a general point, and it's not just about this fence, I am not a supporter of suggesting that people in this town pay for services. We have a practice which is of long standing where the community pays for services that are provided to whoever benefits from them. So we have a splash badge, it's primarily for kids. Everybody pays for it. We have sidewalks that I've never walked on that our PAX dollars pay for. So I don't like the idea of saying, because you live near something that's public, we expect you to pay a share. Everybody pays property tax, we pay for stuff out of the common pot. So I am not in favor of suggesting that people who might have some money are expected to contribute over and above their taxes for things that the town provides. Thank you. Any more comments? Councillor Tower. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to speak in favor of this motion too. I, the only complaint I've also heard is the exactly the same thing that Councillor Everton talks about is that it's pretty darn ugly out there walking by there. I had a couple from uh, Brandon, Manitoba that I took down to show what kind of work we've done because Manitoba's working with water problems constantly. And they were super impressed, except for the fact is that, well, why haven't you done anything about that? You know, and uh, we don't like these businesses having a mess out front, so we start tucking it behind. Now we've opened up the back, so but we've got a, something beautiful for this town, and I agree that uh, everybody has to pay for it. And the advantage I like about this is everybody in town has to pay for it, but then the federal and provincial government have to pony up also. So. I'm really in favor of this. Okay, question? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, Councillor Finney is opposed. Motion is carried. Okay, Councillor Finney, one more motion? Uh, yes. I move that Council approve the purchase of four cast iron flower pots with Town of Sackville in white lettering from Black River Casting in the amount of $10,500. Uh, yeah, uh, $10,005, shipping and HST included. I have a seconder. Councillor Black. Councillor Michaud. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just, um, just want to clarify what the budget it or what the budget was um, for these. Uh. Mr. Cole. Thank you, Councillor Michaud. Uh, the budget uh, under beautification under capital was $15,000. Uh, we spent the just under $4,000 on the bike racks. 
uh, the, the cast iron pots came this way because they're over $6,000, so we need a motion to cancel council to, uh, to purchase them, if you guys desire. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Councillor Finney. I was just going to ask exactly, uh, do these need to be purchased now, and that they're going to be put out now, or are uh, they going to be put out in the spring, and can we purchase them in the spring? Mr. Cole? Uh, the capital budget was allotted for this year, so we're trying to clean up that, that line item. Uh, we wouldn't have bought them in the spring because we wouldn't have had them in time to put them out this year. It's five to six weeks or sometimes even later to get them to us, so they'll be going out in the spring once we receive them. Councillor O'Neill. Yes, I was just wondering, uh, I guess I know where the other pots are. I was wondering where you had planned on putting these. Over time, we're going to replace uh, all or most of the wooden uh, structures we have out there now, flower boxes. Um, they're rotting. They're getting older. They're rusting. We're doing small maintenance on them, but the plan is in the downtown core to uh, continue replacing them with the uh, cast iron pots. Councilor Finney. I was going to ask uh, our treasurer, is there any way that could be carried over until next year? What's a little left? Well, as it's a capital revenue item, so if uh, if it's not spent this year, it does expire, and it uh, gets it gets allocated accordingly. Um, we also have uh, we also will budget for this type of a type of uh, purchase every year, um, so that we're not having we're not going and buying twenty or thirty of them at once. We're buying a few each year, so uh, we would look at spending the allocated funds this year. Uh, that were allocated uh, they'll be put out next spring and uh, uh, depending on capital budget post planning uh, there may be more money allocated next year which again they would probably come in the fall and then roll, roll be put out the following year any more questions i'll call the question Aye. all those in favor Aye. opposed motions carried okay, thank you councillor finney we'll move on to uh recreation programs and events uh, and that would be Councillor O'Neill. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, highlights are for the report is the fall fair was another amazing success, and the staff sends out a big thank you to all the many volunteers and staff who helped to make this a, ro a roaring success again. Sackville Pride Week took place uh, with community groups and volunteers from Mount A Students uh, Organization and um, hosting a variety of events, and they tell me that there was over 300 people who marched in the Pride Parade. There are many programs, uh, current fall programs, which include 50-plus, uh, uh, part-time aerobics, trailblazers, after-school program, ultimate frisbee, pickleball, aquasize, and the list goes on. So I guess there's something for everybody here if you're interested in being active. Uh, community development grant applications have been available, but I understand that that ends today, so probably by the time we go home, it'll be too late. <laughs> the uh, Sackville Arts Hall will, will induct Ernie Sears on Sunday, October the 27th at 1 p.m. at the Sackville United Church. The ceremony will be followed by the plaque unveiling at the Sackville Arts Hall location on Main Street. Uh, anyone wishing to take uh, a baby certified babysitting course uh, can be registered by visiting our www.sackville.com slash programs. Work is underway to implement the recreation master plan and uh, the two, there are two new appointments for the Sackville Arts Wall Board. Uh, which I will have a media, uh, motion on that. And there's also a motion to change the governance guidelines to free up more space at the Civic Center, which will see smaller plaques rather than larger charcoal drawings, which will allow the wall to continue to expand in the years to come. And I have two, two motions, Your Worship. Well, first of all, are there any questions on the report? Okay, thank you. Okay. No. No. Sorry. No? 
He had flashed his light briefly. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> I moved the council. No, point. Uh, Councilor Black. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, it was a comment, so hopefully it's a good one after that. Um, <clears throat> I just I wanted to congratulate staff again on Fall Fair, but I, I was just wanted to put on my hat as the Main Street Mile Race Director um, and just comment that we had 72 runners that um, participated in the event this year, which is down from previous years. But we had there was a couple of high schools that typically run in uh, the race in Sackville from Moncton and Riverview, and they they couldn't come out, uh, out because of a track and field meet. Um, but it was a, a wonderful course again. Most of the runners at the end responded that they really liked the new course down Lawrence Street. That straight shot to the end that you can see the finish line way at the end of the road was um, much appreciated by the runners. Um, and I, I want to thank the town and staff and volunteers because they, we kind of used them a little bit because they blocked the street for the parade and, and the runners get to take advantage of that. Uh, and this was our 18th year for the Main Street Mile, which is the longest running, pun intended, uh, race in the Maritimes, I believe. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to thank staff for that. Uh, thank you. Hey, Councillor O'Neill. Thank you. I just might add, Councillor Black, I think the highlight of your run was when we watched the little guy. I don't know whether he could have been three years old, but he was on a scooter. And as he went by us, he was flying, and then he was doing, putting his leg out back and, and doing all kinds of tricks and, <laughs> and flying up in the air and so on. And I said, it just made the, the greatest end of your race. So you bought one? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I envied him. <laughs> okay, my motions. I move that council appoint Steve Riddlington and Christine Gilroy to the Sackville Sports Wall of Fame Board <laughs> of directors for the third uh, third year term ending June the 30th, 2022. I have a second, Councillor Tower. Any comments? Councillor Michaud. Thank you, Deputy, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, just in regards to the board, um, is there information available on, uh, on our website in regards to the, the sports wall of fame or the arts wall of fame or the, the arts wall uh, in regards to current inductees, uh, who current board members are, is that is that available for the public through the town website? <coughs> Mr. Burke, um, without calling up the website in, in front of me, Councillor, I have to I have to double check. I know we do have some information on there. I'm not sure to what extent um, we have in terms of the governance gui guidelines. Um, I know the past inductees are there in, a, in kind of a virtual hall of fame, but in terms of some of the other more board governance type documents, I'd have to I'd have to double check. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll call the question. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you. Council O'Neill. <clears throat> I move that Council approve the changes to the Sackville Sports Wall of Fame governance guidelines as presented at the special meeting of Council on October the 7th, 2019. I have a seconder. No, Councilor Black. Any comments? Councillor Michaud. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, over the last week, um, I've received some feedback in regards to, to this, and um, um, there's some folks who, who are indicating that, you know, they don't like to see the, the, the charcoal drawings gone. There's been comments about, what about saving space with the digital presentation? Um, I'm just kind of wondering what kind of terms of reference was used by the board in regards to determining um, this. Also, what's the timeline? Um, I, I was just at the Civic Center yesterday at the advanced poll, and, and there appears to be wall space there. So, I mean, and where we only do it every two years, is this something that urgently has to be done right now? Um, or is there possibility, some opportunity here to give it some further thought, and uh, especially the, the great job that was done with the arts wall. Um, you know, I'm just kind of wondering if there's opportunity here to kind of do something uh, a little bit different um, to see the longevity of the wall at the Civic Center. Mr. Burke. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor Michaud. Um, it's, it's my understanding there was no specific uh, terms of reference used by the board. Um, all the members on the board are there because of their uh, background and um, love and passion for sports in our in our community. So, 
Um, I know, and certainly uh, our own recreation um, director, um, a lot of them have visited other sites. Um, you know, St. Thomas has a really lovely uh, exhibit. There's, there's tons of different ways we can approach this. Um, we do have an online virtual um, uh, gallery now, which is available on our website. So we, we, several years ago when we had the new website design, we did move into the digital age, um, recognizing that at some point we're, we were going to run out of wall space. Um, our display is, is definitely unique, um, it, but I guess the issue is, is exactly as you pointed out, it's, it's wall space. Um, and eventually we continue with, with a, an induction ceremony every two years, we are eventually going to, going to run out of room. So I think um, you know, we've, we've certainly seen some of the, the comments on, on Facebook as well. We've had several emailed to us directly. Um, but just keep in mind the plaques, while, while Mr. Pride suggested we would be moving to smaller plaques, um, the plaques themselves haven't been designed. Um, so I think the intent was always to recognize the sketch or we were going to continue with the charcoal drawing. The charcoal drawing would get, pre would get presented to the inductee and the potential is there for that uh, image to then get portrayed on an, on an actual plaque, uh, which would then save up some, save up some wall space at the Civic Center. Um, that would come at, a, as a, at an expense for us uh, to kind of redo the plaques that are there, um, but it would be considerably cheaper than going into a, a, a bigger, uh, larger capital project that we did with the Arts Wall, uh, when we were also stuck for space, um, but when we were able to leverage the Canada 150 grant, which is one of the main reasons why we were able to contribute to that, to that project. So um, the Decisions Councils, the, the board's just given a recommendation that this would be an option based on their uh, experience and, and visit some other uh, sports wall uh, exhibits, but the decision rests right here with council. This is something uh, you don't want to rush into. There is still wall space there. Um, you know, I know our, our parks and facility staff will, will make it work for another year or whatever we need, but um, the board's recognized that we're going to run out of room. I think we have um, sort of two options here. You could make a motion to defer this if you wish, or, um, or if we, you thought that we should give more consideration, we could defeat this current motion and have it presented at some later date. So, <coughs> Councillor Michel? I, I guess the thing is we're visually, council can't see what the format is going to be or how it's going to look. Um, it's very hard to envision if this is going to be an improvement to to you know to what's there or enhance it, right? So right, right now we're trying to envision, or I am, I'm trying to envision how this is is going to look there. Um, it could it could be great, or it could be hey maybe we could have done it a little bit differently. That that's all I'm thinking right now. I mean right, right now it's you know it could be it could be the, the best thing. However, I can't. I, I, there's nothing for me to kind of look at saying, uh, yeah, that, that I think, you know, I, I agree. I think that's the, the best way to grow or to go. Um, that, that's all my concern is I, I would hate to see us invest any sort of amount of money and then find out that, well, wait a minute, maybe if we had just, um, if there, a grant had come up down the road or something and we took advantage of it or we did budget for it accordingly that, you know, you'd be able to say, yeah, maybe we could have gone to this extent. But where I can't, visually get an idea of what it's going to look like um, then, or, or the public get op that opportunity to see what it's going to look like, then um, I'm just kind of concerned of changing the governance at this point in time. So. Councillor Evans? Yeah, uh, what we're saying is that or we've determined that, that it's, we can't keep doing it the way we're doing it. We're going to do it differently. And as uh, Mr. Burke said, we haven't decided on what the plaques are like. So obviously I can't visualize it easier, but we won't approve something if we don't think it's an improvement. So uh, w it's not like we have, we're saying it's going to be this, but we don't know what it is. So we're going to do it differently. And then what that differently is, the, the nature of those plaques is yet to be determined. And we will have to think it's better or we won't vote to do it. So. I don't see why we have to stop recognizing that we have a problem and saying we're going to start moving towards a, you know, improving it now. I don't see the necessity of postponing it. Uh, just so I'm clear, the, the next round of inductees would be on the system we're using now, correct? <clears throat> that, that's correct. Thank you. Councilor Butcher? Um, I was, my light was on before, Bills. I was wanting. <laughs> I, I was wanting to say something similar in that by recognizing that um, 
that we need to, um, uh, as presented at the special meeting of council. So at the special meeting of council, we had discussed how we were running out of space and that the um, Wall of Fame governance body had stated that they needed to make some changes and wanted to move forward with that. But we don't know what would be the move forward, and they would need approval before they move forward with something. What we are saying here is, right, the status quo is not going to work much longer. Am I correct with that? Right. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Councillor Mitchell. I guess the thing is, is that before you change governance, I think you should have an understanding of what it's going to look like. So have an understanding of what it's going to look like, then change your governance, right? Because the governance indicates right now the person gets a plaque and a, and a charcoal sketch goes on the wall, right? And now it's going to be reversed. But there's nothing showing, either, again, um, so you're, you're putting in place the governance, but really I, I haven't been showing or I don't think we've been showing. Anyway, that, that's fine. Well, I'm Anyone else? Councillor Patower. Thank you. Uh, the board is not looking to say this is the way we want it done. Uh, it's been a struggle for two years. We've been looking at this, trying to find out ways, which is why uh, we had Matt in particular go to a few other places to see what they're doing. Uh, and so right now they've come up with this idea and it's if they can get more help to determine exactly what it should be, I don't think the board's going to mind this at all. Uh, I, I can't speak for them or even speak for myself. But uh, the idea is that uh, we're trying to do something to improve it, and we want to move forward before it's too late. So if we delayed this even a month to have more conversation, but it doesn't, I don't think it has to be done this year. If I remember right, we still have room for two more, but I'm not 100% sure of that. But uh, so it's just looking for guidance, and if the council wants to give more guidance, We'll take it. Mr. Burke. <clears throat> um, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Aiken and, and Councillor Tower. Because one, one of the things is that I should have mentioned is that um, you know, you, if Council agrees to kind of endorse the recommendation of the board of, to kind of pursue a different option, um, there's then going to have to be a graphic designer <laughs> retained uh, to produce a design that will meet the expectations of the board um, itself. So. Uh, you know, as I stated earlier, the, the members of the board, uh, I think you saw with the two um, you know, appointments tonight, these are long-standing uh, people in the community who take this very seriously. So I think they're looking out for the best interests of the, the community sport um, uh, individuals and, and groups here in the, in the community too, but that won't be done without a very detailed uh, look at the design of the plaques before anything goes forward beyond, uh, beyond the governance change. Thank you. Councillor Buck. Um, I just wanted to point out that if you, if, if you go back to the uh, package from the special council, it, it has highlighted that a plaque approximately eight and a half by ten and a half, or eight inches by ten inches, sorry, will be displayed on the official sports wall of fame located in the foyer of the Tantrum Veterans Memorial Civic Center. Inductees shall also receive a sackable sports wall of fame lapel pin and a charcoal drawing suitably framed and completed. So there is some specific indication of how of what that sizing will be. So I, I just thought I'd put that out there so that, that the change that has been suggested is very specific and not sort of general. I, I, I just want to make sure that that's... Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, Councillors Black and Michaud are opposed. Oh, motion is carried. Okay, we'll move on to um, policy by, oh, sorry, public safety and Councillor O'Neill. Thank you again. The Sackle Fire and Rescue responded to 26 calls for service in the month of September, which included 13 commercial fire alarms, six utility pole incidents, two motor vehicle collisions, two calls for assistance from Ambulance New Brunswick, one carbon monoxide alarm, one electrical fire, one mutual aid request from the Memorcook Fire Department. And the 
department is currently at 126 calls for service as of the end of September. Training sessions uh, were auto extraction and they also did station and equipment checks. Firefighters held an open house at the station during the fall fair, which was very well attended. And the firefighters continue to cook pancakes for the children, which they enjoy Tuesday mornings as part of the breakfast program at the Sal Salem Elementary School. Uh, the department uh, says a big thank you to everyone in the community who helped support the Sackville Fire and Rescue, this annual truck draw fundraiser. Uh, and this year they were ama amazed at selling all of the tickets, 3,500 of them went which I was a winner of one of them. Just had to mention that. Eh? <laughs> uh, uh, the chief would like to remind all citizens and um, uh, for Sackville and surrounding areas to begin preparing for the winter heating season and have their furnace, chimneys, vents inspected and cleaned by qualified professionals. Also, he uh, asks that we all ensure that our civic number is visible from the road and as always, he reminds that it's important to have emergency kit prepared for 72 hours. Um, and we also are glad to have the chief back from his sick leave. Yeah. And that's the report. If there's any questions, Thank I'm you. sure the chief or deputy would be glad to answer them. Do we have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Council O'Neill. Yeah, we won't comment on the favoritism in the draw. Um, <laughs> Councillor Butcher. Thank you. Um, I am reporting the police services highlights as submitted by Sergeant Gagne. Uh, so September was another busy month for the Sackville de Detachment with 157 calls for service being fielded. Um, along with property crimes, there are several different areas that are monitored. There was, um, for instance, one particular business had four of the 11 false alarms that were registered in the month of September. There were seven collisions, none causing any injuries, but one resulted in an impaired driving investigation. Um, there were six Mental Health Act calls, uh, which is consistent with prior months. And these are being tracked by the division because they're very time consuming calls, often tying up one or two officers for several hours because they also have to wait at the hospital. Uh, they've been tracking noise complaints. There were 10 complaints last month. Some of them were daytime reports and four of the complaints happened to be on homecoming weekend, which is not unusual seeing as it, it's a large influx of people and there are related events um, happening in the community during homecoming. And September was a month when traffic initiatives were organized with a focus on the schools. So patrols during peak school traffic times were increased to promote safety for motorists and pedestrians. And a number of tickets were issued throughout the month for a variety of offenses. And that is the report. Thank you, Councillor. Any questions? Okay, we'll move on then to policy bylaw, Councillor Black. Uh, the policy and bylaw report can be found on page 43 of the package. <clears throat> the policy bylaw liaison group met on September 17th, 2019. Bylaw number 210, the town's current dangerous or unsightly premises bylaw has been reviewed and a new bylaw drafted being bylaw number 269. Our current bylaw references the Municipalities Act. There is very little change in the new bylaw surrounding municipal powers and it was re recommended by our solicitor to write the bylaw incorporating the wording directly out of the Local Governance Act rather than simply referring to or referencing the act. The only significant changes uh, is the addition of an appeals process and assigning an appeals committee of council, which would take place by motion of council once the bylaw has been passed. Bylaw number 251, a bylaw respecting the procedure and organization of council review is ongoing. A management working group with council was held on Monday, September 23rd. At that time, the draft code of conduct bylaw and procedure and organization of council bylaw were discussed and an initial start on the review process began. This will continue to be reviewed in the coming months. Um, bylaws that received third and final reading in August have been downloaded to the town's website. And there was also, as we heard already tonight, a re request for quotations were sent out to two qualified fence installers for a proposed addition to the fence along the service road um, at the retention pond. 
and I have a motion as well. Okay, are there any questions? Councillor Misha. Worship, um, just wondering if there's been um, any feedback coming in regards to the two hour parking restrictions that happened also on Saturday in our downtown. Uh, we mentioned about homecoming recently and stuff and I'm just kind of wondering if there's been anything coming forward. I know I've heard it a couple of times from, from the public and um, in inviting people to our, our community for events and they shop downtown or eat downtown and come back to their car finding a $50 parking ticket. So I'm just kind of wondering if there's been any um, other feedback on that or um, comment from the business community? Um, yeah. I've heard that, Councillor Black. Uh, aside from a friend of mine getting a, 50, a, a resident of Sackville, a friend of mine getting a $50 ticket uh, <coughs> and, and complaining to me directly about it, um, I haven't heard anything outside of that. Um, I'm not sure if the bylaw officer has, has received a lot of negative feedback from citizens. Okay, any more comments? Mr. Burke. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Deputy Mayor. You can, I guess in, in um, response to Councilor Michaud's uh, question, um, we have had conversations with the um, um, the manager of, of Main Street Redevelopment, uh, the Downtown Business Association, and they have on occasion expressed concerns by uh, as a representative of representation of the local business community with respect to the two-hour parking. Um, so it, over um, uh, the summer this year, we had new uh, parking signs um, designed. Um, we're getting them printed um, now, and they will go up in the in the spring, um, which Ms. Wicker uh, shared with the uh, Main Street members at the last board, <coughs> at the last board meeting, all in an effort to help uh, educate uh, visitors as well as local people that we do have two-hour parking uh, on Saturday, and that was kind of I guess our our olive branch to see if we could uh, help participate and uh, raise awareness of the two-hour parking. But there have been concerns raised by local business with respect to the two-hour parking. Thank you. You have one motion. I, I move that council give first reading and name only to bylaw number 269, the town of Sackville dangerous or unsightly premises bylaw. You have a seconder. Councillor Butcher. Right. Any comments or questions? I'd like to comment. Councillor Black. Um, it was mentioned last week that, and actually in the <coughs> policy report too, that not much had changed in the bylaw and that there really are no teeth in this document, even though the LGA has replaced the MA, Municipalities Act. I would argue that while not much has changed, the strength of this bylaw is in its wording and direct references to the new Provincial Act, rather than being a one-page placeholder within our body of on-the-books bylaws. It is my hope that through the process that the Clerk's Office and the Policy Bylaw Liaison Group has gone through, and then the review by our lawyer, that the new document may be a deterrent at the very least and a bulletproof vest at the very best. <laughs> Just a statement. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Okay, I'll call the question. Five All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Okay, we'll move on to personnel and Councillor Evans. Um, the uh, report is on page 57 in the package. And the following is an overview of recent activities during the past month. Uh, council liaison meeting was held on October 10th, 2019. Committee members referenced receiving several positive comments at, UMA, at the UMNB conference from delegates of other municipalities on how Sackville is viewed as a leader on several fronts in terms of various projects, initiatives, staff involvement, and support within their fields to other communities and provincial organizations. It's, uh, now I should have prepared better, but it seems to me there were about a dozen motions at uh, UMNB, and I think four or five of them were our own, and they all passed. So we're definitely punching above our weight. Uh, at the end of September, there were 34 permanent employee, employees, employees and one temporary. Uh, on the staffing side, we are progressing to address several vacancies in public works department which will be filled in the near future. Unfortunately, the department also has a few people out on short-term leave, which leads us currently understaffed. We are also pleased to see the fire chief back and, after, uh, and wish him continued good health. And he probably wants to stop calling attention to him, so I'll move on. 
There are several grievances outstanding which are currently being addressed. Uh, for example, call out provisions and work on st statutory pay. Town also held an information session last month uh, for employees on pension benefits. And that's the report read by me but submitted by the CAO. Any comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Black. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit to the uh, uh, talking about the, the UMMB conference. Um, the UMB delegates that I talked to spoke of Sackville's age-friendly community standing, the regular review of bylaws, approaches to climate change and adaptation plans, business acceptance and growth, connections to Mount Allison University, and thinking municipally as well as provincially uh, when making decisions. So um, we had lots of conversations with people at UMNB that, uh, again, to Bill's point that, sorry, Councillor Evans' point, uh, that Sackville was really doing some great things and was uh, sort of a, a head of the game on a lot of things. Uh, and it should not be understated that many of the managers uh, of, that our town is lucky to have sit in many regional, provincial, and area of expertise specific boards, committees, and bodies because they were specifically asked to do so due to, due to their integrity, loyalty, and unwavering ability to do their jobs within our community. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Councillor Michaud. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, just regards to the vacancies and, and short-term leaves, um, is, is that having any effect on our day-to-day -day work and capital projects? Do we foresee any issues happening there, or are, are things still able to move ahead? Mr. Acton? Um, I guess uh, just to say that it hasn't affected us is, would be maybe a little bit uh, false, but. Um, the, the other uh, staff have stepped up um, and uh, we're just finishing up University Avenue. We're, uh, we've got a good handle on Wellington sidewalk. Um, all the projects are, are well in check. Um, we've been able to, uh, to get all the festival fall, fall fair off uh, without any hitches. We've got uh, some Christmas lights that we're planning to put up after Remembrance Day. So I think we're in good shape. Uh, so we should uh, get back to full complement before winter so uh, I'm not concerned at this point that uh, we're, we're, I think we'll be, in, we'll be in good position. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, we'll move on then to Corporate Affairs and Strategic Development. Councillor Michaud. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. The uh, report appears on page 58 in the package, and I'll just... Uh, Start with a few highlights here, and then I, I do have a couple of motions as well. Um, just to uh, let everyone know, works has started on the new marketing plan um, with the portfolio, and um, kickoff meeting was held uh, with the consulting team on the 17th of September, uh, and there's background research underway, and uh, the consultants are back in uh, town in October to continue their work on the plan. Um, staff, and I'll, I'm going to get uh, Mr. Burke to kind of in, um, provide some more information on this. Staff attended a variety of meetings over the month, uh, including two meetings of Schenectville Climate Change Collaborative, a meet and greet with Mount Allison Administration, a Virathon NB um, on 2020 event planning, Ducks Unlimited, um, and uh, Craft Gallery on the VIC operations, and of course the experiential uh, learning. Ex uh, position and I'm just wondering if maybe uh, Mr. Burke could just elaborate a little bit on some of those meetings and, and what came from those. <clears throat> yeah, thank you Councillor Michaud. Um, the Chignetto Climate Change um, Collaborative has uh, recently been renamed, it used to be the, the Tantramar uh, Climate Change Collaborative so um, we meet on a, I would say on a regular schedule but I guess every so often as indicated. It's typically chaired by EOS Eco Energy and there's representation from um, the province of Nova Scotia, Cumberland County, the town of Amherst, um, on the on the municipal and EMO um, side of things, as well as on the on the New Brunswick side. So uh, we're there, um, Dwayne and I, and from time to time, um, Chief Bowser um, sits in as well, um, representatives from from our own uh, EMO office in New Brunswick, and it's really just a a, a, a sharing session where we uh, give uh, roundtable updates of what each uh, unit's been up to. And then we've, we've typically been um, you know, under the direction of EOS hosting at least once a year kind of a learning day, uh, which sometimes it's, it's a, a public day, sometimes it's a specific technical training for the collaborative itself. Um, and this year we've reached out to the uh, Tantramar High to see if we can possibly 
um, combine some of the expertise on the collaborative and share some of the work that's being done with, uh, with the youth in the community uh, in response to the, um, the uh, climate change strikes to let them know that uh, there is some important work that's been uh, underway in Nova Scotia as well as New Brunswick. So that's um, the Climate Change Collaborative. Um, every year we kind of alternate between the university hosting and the town hosting uh, meet and greet on the administration side. So uh, it's a little just an opportunity to chat with some of our colleagues and network with some of our colleagues up at, at Mount Allison. And we, um, that event this year was housed at the new uh, conference center at uh, Windsor Hall as a bit of a showcase for them. Um, the Avarathon uh, New Brunswick, this, this is a big deal. This is the, the North America's largest um, high school environmental education uh, campaign. And it's uh, taking place on, at Mount Allison University in 2021. So we um, just had basically an introduction meeting with the event coordinator last week, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kelly Spurls and I, and we're attending the, um, the, the host uh, committee meeting tomorrow at Mount Allison. So we'll have uh, some further updates. So there's been no formal announcement, but uh, as the coordinator said, everyone knows that in 2021, the event is taking place in, at the university. Um, Ducks Unlimited was largely around the St. James Street compound, uh, and I had the pleasure of accompanying um, Adam Campbell, a biologist with uh, Ducks Unlimited, to meet with a, um, a property owner about the project. And, um, sorry, two, two left, uh, Craft Gallery. Uh, we've, we've met with them to discuss some operational issues as um, was noted th during the Tourism Business Development Report. Um, our tourism um, services wind down after this weekend, after Festival by the Marsh. Um, and then the, the Craft uh, Gallery volunteers, and including their um, their paid uh, employee are then left in the building for the, um, the remainder of the year. So um, we t talked about a variety of issues ranging from security to operations, maintenance, cleaning, et cetera, which we do from time to time with the, um, with the, the main folks of the craft gallery. And then lastly, the, the experiential learning position uh, over the month was mainly the interview process of, of narrowing down the, the candidate. So we're, we're very pleased that um, Ms. Waugh is uh, with us and uh, she's doing some great work with uh, Mr. Kelly Sproles. Continue on. Um, staff uh, continue to work on the potential design for the new dog park at Beach Hill. Uh, reached out to several municipalities uh, on best practice and uh, working with landscape architect firm on the possible design. Um, and uh, staff will revisit the dog park with council once a proposed layout and related pricing are established. Um, uh, of course, something uh, important that we've been working on, uh, the inaugural meeting of the Mayor's Round Table on Climate Change was held in, uh, on September uh, 10th, 25 participants, very positive, uh, engaging meeting, um, originating, uh, originating from the discussion, of course, uh, from the, uh, the, was the idea of a youth forum, um, which was then organized by Mount Allison uh, Student Union, and um, that was held at Mount A uh, in, on October 2nd, and the group is now working on several action items um, to uh, bring back um, for uh, in the coming weeks to prepare for a public forum and uh, which they anticipate in November. Um, and I'll, the next point, I'll, I'll probably get Mr. Burke again, um, it was regards to the 2019 Atlantic Planners Institute uh, Conference in St. John's, Newfoundland that he attended and also the presentation on the uh, use of social media on uh, the Lawrence Street storm water mitigation and the reason I kind of focused that, we, we attended a fairly um, well received presentation on um, the use of social media by municipalities um, at the UMMB and I just kind of thought where um, staff have kind of been asked to present on how they did things during that, it might be good to kind of get a little feedback from, uh, from Mr. Burke on that, so. Mr. Burke. Yeah. Um, Deputy Mayor, thank you, Councillor uh, uh, Michaud. Yeah, I guess I'm on my own worst enemy sometimes. I guess with a, um, you know, we've, uh, they, typically what happens with these conferences is they'll put out a call for proposals and you then submit um, a, a response uh, and then there's a, a jury of, of sorts and then they uh, <coughs> determine which, which proposals are successful and then which ones are not. Um, we, I guess I submitted a proposal on, um, you know, the social media, is it a, is it a tool or trouble? And um, it was one of the, one of the, the, the points um, uh, within the conference theme, which was a reflection that they were looking for uh, municipalities or consultants or someone from the private sector uh, to elaborate on. So 
Um, we paired up with, or got paired up, I guess, with the manager of heritage and urban design from the city of Fredericton, um, uh, who spoke about their um, their dealings with the uh, Officer Square. As you all know, they had uh, some major uh, issues with the, the redesign of that park. And we also, uh, I guess, shared the, the slot with the manager of construction engineering from the city of St. John's, who was presenting on the, their Big Dig project, which was the five-year redevelopment of, of Water Street, which is their main commercial commercial street. So I guess um, I guess what we focused on was the uh, the lessons learned, and I guess the kind of the the, the creative writing or, or blog, I guess that we we hosted as part of the Water Street project. That was the the first time we've we've tended to engage with the, with the public in that way. Um, and we, you know, from the f feedback that we received from, from people, it was a, a different way of providing information on a large, complicated construction project where we really made an, an effort, um, Dwayne and I, in dealing with our, our engineering consultants, was to boil it down into you know, very, very, very simple language and to be honest and open with people in, in the blog post about what um, was happening and, and when so that people could kind of follow along and, and, and follow the story of the, of the entire project. So. Um, that was what we shared with the um, with the group. We had about a little over 50 people, I'd say, for for our session, and there was a 140 at the conference in general. Thank you. I'll, I'll carry on here with the report. Um, just a reminder to Sackle businesses um, uh, and in, in interest to owner operators um, uh, that registration is now open for the Sackle chapter of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, of, of Greater Moncton, so if you could please contact uh, the Chamber for registration details, and I believe um, those details are on our website as, as well. Um, the Community Partnership Working Group met on September 25th in advance of uh, Homecoming Weekend. The uh, group had a present, uh, presence at Wallace McCain Student Centre on September 26th and the Farmers Market on September 28th. And, um, and provided an opportunity to meet with a variety of students and residents about the importance of being a good neighbor. And I believe there was actually some swag this year that they had that they're <laughs> handing out. Stickers. Uh, yeah. A um, variety of initiatives are planned for 2019-2020, including the continuation of public service announcements during um, um, the Mount Allison Football Games alumni field. And... Um, in order to uh, fulfill obligations stemming from a 1977 subdivision plan, the town was recently asked to provide an easement across the Middle Sackville Lagoon property. A motion to sign the necessary legal documents will be presented uh, this evening. Also, following the discussion at the Special Council meeting on October 7th regarding a letter from the Tanchmary TV Club requesting access to specific areas of the community, a uh, motion pertaining to this request will be advanced at the, this evening and uh, the club has requested access to the former CN rail line between the Transcanada Highway and the town limits in Middle Sackville, or Mount View Road and Stanley Drive, and then to the um, former CN rail line off Stanley Drive. And that's the report, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions? Councillor Evans. Yeah, as usual, not questions, but comments. Um, just to start off, the uh, newly uh, Shignecto Climate Change Advocation Collaborative is something, the workshops that, that uh, Mr. Burke talked about, I have had the ben privilege, I guess, of going to several of them, and they're really useful. It's nice to be in the company of skilled professionals who are uh, you know, trying to make the world a better place. So it's been hugely enlightening for me, and I just commend them on their work. Um, the... Um, I'm, and I'm delighted that the, and I'm looking here to get the name correct, but the uh, Mayor's Roundtable on Climate Change, that group finally got together. I've had, I was keen on this to start with, and I've had questions asking about it, and I'm delighted that it happened, that it was positive, and that things are, are coming out of it. This is a huge problem. As Councillor Black has said, we've uh, uh, shown that we're serious about uh, this issue. There are limited things that uh, municipalities can do in the face of global climate change but there are things that we can do and I like to think that we're doing at least some of them so they're to be commended on that I'm just delighted with this whole list of initiatives and I'm not criticizing him but Councilor Michaud did not read everything in this report there's a lot of good stuff there so once again uh, I echo, echo what Councilor Black said we have uh, very capable staff working hard to make the world a better place in particular the Sackville part of it and I want to thank them publicly for it Thank you, Councillor. 
<clears throat> and you have some, oh, sorry, Councillor Tower. Uh, I also only have a comment too. Uh, while playing in the alumni golf tournament, after we were talking about how one time our fall fair and the homecoming was always the same weekend, so that was made a major celebration so the university and all the students and those who were visiting could join in our celebrations. And I know they're talking to Todd about it, and uh, so I think they're trying to find out if they can now get the organizers of the, of the schedule to fall in line to see if they can come up with the same date so that we can enhance our celebration. Thank you. You have. Um, I have some. Mo yes. Some motions. Yep. I move that council authorize the mayor and clerk to sign and seal the easement agreement to grant a right of way across PID number seven zero zero four six six zero two, which clearly indicated, which was clearly indicated on the plan of subdivision, which was prepared in nineteen seventy seven and registered as subdivision plan number 11046. Uh, second by Councillor Tower. Questions, comments? I'll call the question. Question. Oh, <laughs> Councillor Evans. I just wonder if it's not worthwhile for those members of the public who are watching who weren't at the discussion meeting, just a brief explanation about why we're doing this. This is, can I? <clears throat> yeah. uh, thank you, Councillor Evans. Um, so, I guess back in, in 1977, when we were contemplating the Middle Sackville Lagoon project, um, we purchased um, property from um, uh, from a family uh, in that area. And as part of the part of the deal of, of the day was that we were to provide access across that parcel, so they could then um, have a legal right to their property on the opposite side of the CN Rail Line. Um, and that was to be to be. Uh, the right of way was meant to be in a location that was deemed acceptable to the town and town representatives because the, the, the design of the lagoon hadn't yet been, been contemplated. So when the lawyer was migrating this uh, the parcel in question into the new land registration system, um, they reached out to us just asking if it was possible for us to kind of tidy up the, the loose ends from 1977. So uh, in speaking to our, our uh, engineering public works department, it's no problem for us to provide a right of way along one of the property lines, and that doesn't compromise the future expansion of the of the middle sack of the lagoons when we're uh, in a position to do that in the in the very far future. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll call the question. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Councilor Micho. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I move that Council authorize the Mayor to write a letter in response to the July 22nd, 2019 letter received from the Tanchmar ATV Club supporting their request for the town's endorsement to the NB ATV <coughs> Federation for access to the former rail line along with Mount View Road and Stanley Drive. Do I have a seconder? Councillor uh, O'Neill? Any comments? I should um, just make it clear that if you vote in favor of this, you're supporting the use of the, the, the former rail line and against it's denying it. Councillor Tower. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I am going to speak against this motion. Um, I know the presentation was a very good presentation. Uh, and I know part of the presentation talked about the, the trail that goes down by Port Elgin. And it's not used by many people down there uh, for walking like it was intended to or biking. And the biggest reason from my conversation with the residents was that uh, too many ATVs are tearing up the roads. Um, and <coughs> when it comes to our end up here, there are a lot of residents that use that pathway for going for walks at nighttime or the afternoon, weekends. Uh, and at one time, we used to have a problem with ATVers. And we used to put a blockade across so they couldn't get through but then they found ways to move our blockades. Uh, now I know that I'm pretty sure that a lot of those people were not members of this club or the association, because uh, I think there's more responsibility in this association. 
but uh, they've come forward. We've made changes to our roads to allow them to make gain access, but I don't think we have a full understanding of what the impact is, and our staff has alluded to that, that they need more time to see the impact we're having. Uh, and then the idea that we're going to allow Mount View and Stanley Drive also as a more road to drive on, I think the, uh, the trail will become Mount View and Stanley Drive also. Uh, so I, at this time, I cannot support the idea of this. Thank you. Councilor Butcher? Thank you. Um, I'm also speaking um, against this motion. I realize this is to just endorse, but to, to give our endorsement to their request to access the rail line. That is not up to us. But what this would also do is give ATVers access to Mount View Road and Stanley Drive. Um, I don't live on Mount View Road, but I live on another road that goes way down. And there are so many issues with speeding cars and lack of ability for walkers and ATVs as well, lots of high speeds. I know that the people who are part of the ATV Federation are, are rule followers, but I think that opening up a wide span of our public roads that do not have sidewalks and are not as well lit as some of our streets downtown, not to say that I'm endorsing ATVs downtown, but I think that that is opening up potentials for some safety concerns. Um, so this is not me saying that I would not support their plea to open up the rail line. This is my saying that I am not comfortable with opening up Mount View Road and Stanley Drive for ATV use. Okay, thank you. Councillor Evans. Yeah, I'm not going to belabor the point. I will be voting against this motion as well for the reasons articulated by my colleagues. Staff um, recommended that, and that um, is something that I certainly consider. When um, we voted to uh, write a letter of support to the provincial government about the Wright Street access, it was something because I know that members of this group, as uh, Councillor Butcher says, are the law-abiding ones, the reasonable ones. They made a reasonable request to do something, and I felt obliged to accommodate that. And it's early to know whether ATVs on the street is, is a good idea or a bad idea. And so I am not prepared to go further yet um, in terms of use of ATVs on the road. When it comes to using the trails, sadly, um, ATVs on trails don't work well with other people, even if the ATVers themselves are accommodating. Um, it chews up trails pretty quickly. So uh, for those reasons, I will be voting against this motion. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. No, no, we're, uh, there's no comments right now. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Black. Uh, again, like Councillor Evans, I won't belabor the point. A, a lot of the, I'll be voting against this as well. A lot of the points that have been made already, I won't repeat, but I'll add one more thing. Um, when we were talking about the rail line, um, if ATVs were, were to drive to the rail line and stop at the highway, there'd be nowhere to go. So that it doesn't really make much sense to me. They're, that's not, they're not legally allowed to cross the highway, nor would they, are they looking for access to drive up the side of the property of Tanchamar High School, which I wouldn't recommend anyway. Uh, so I just thought I'd put that in there, that it just doesn't really make much sense to me. But uh, I'll be voting against this as well. All right, thank you. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Yes. Um, if if it's not supposed to be standing drive in this motion, but Station Street, then okay, we should make a correction. Okay, we'll consider the friendly amendment. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Okay, with the motion with uh, Stanley Drive change to Station. Um, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, I remind you to. Yeah, if you're voting against this motion, you're voting against the 
if you're voting in favor, you're allowing access to the rail line. All those in favor? Aye. Councillor O'Neill? All those opposed? Aye. The motion is defeated. Okay, um, there being no new business, um, we'll move to question period. And Mr. Work? I'd like to know a little bit more about the discussion re-surveillance cameras in the town. Um, it was suggested, it seems to me, that you should look into this. I'm wondering where that goes from here. What happens now? Is it part of the budget process or what? Um, it, it isn't right now, but we haven't fixed a budget yet. So. Um, what happened in the past was that it was proposed um, for <coughs> reasons of security and that sort of thing, uh, that we put cameras in the downtown. And the idea was to post them on the corners, I, I believe it was Main Street and Bridge, and just pointing four different ways. Um, I'm reminded, thank you, thanks to Councillor Finney, that uh, uh, Dr. Fox did a um, report on this, and the, the there was, problems of expense, there was problems, a lot of people complained about privacy, um, and there was sort of a discussion of what, it, what particular technology should be used. Uh, you know, periods of recording, how long these lasted, who could see them, all that sort of thing. So that was the state then. Um, and literally this request is, what, two hours old now, so I, I, uh, I don't know, staff can look into this and see if there's any okay. improvements have been made. So I, I can write that staff will look into it. Yeah, yeah. Ha, have you, has council directed staff to look into it? Not formally, no, but we can. Thank you. Um, the privacy fence, I'm, uh, it's one thing to say privacy fence, but it's not clear to me what that would look like. Um, I see a chain link fence and, and What's the, what's the privacy aspect of it, just uh, it's, visually? I, I believe it's one of those fences with the, uh, the fabric woven between the links. Yeah, Slats in it, so that there's some visual barriers, not just chain link. So it's a, it's a fabric. Uh, Mr. Acton? I believe there are, um, it's, uh, so basically it's uh, plastic pieces that are woven within the chain link fence so that you really can't see through the fence. It's a, it's a, it's a way to create a, a complete uh, barrier uh, by using chain link fence. So there are plastic pieces that are going to be blatantly black in color and are woven in between the, uh, the chain link fence to create that privacy or can't see through. Thank you. And finally, um, I didn't see the package, obviously, that you received last uh, week on the Sports Wall of Fame. So it's not really clear to me what Council did tonight in terms of uh, what you authorized. It, it seems as though the drawings will re be replaced, judging by what was said tonight, with plaques that are 8 inches by 10 inches. Is, th is that what Council has now authorized the board to do? Um, <coughs> my reading of it is that we've authorized them to go ahead and look at changes to it. Um, I, I was under the impression as I was reading that that, that was one suggestion for change. Um, they can entertain others. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? Well, they could come back with something else. Yes. I thought I was clear on an issue until Councillor Evans said he was clear and it had to do with the rezoning and it Don't ever listen to Councillor Evans. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But um this R three designation, th there's two things he said they're separate and what I thought was that the the, the um development up on Wright and Fawcett needed to have a rezoning amendment. Were they looking for a variation to the R3 or whatever you call it down here? Or are we looking to change the R3 designation in the entire municipality? 
like like you did with the height bylaw, and we have that uh, monstrosity. Oh no, that change just applies to that PID number. Just for there, so yeah. they're just looking for one uh, a one-off if they go ahead, not for the entire municipality. Oh yeah, right. Okay, it wasn't clear because you said it was two separate things. Am I wrong? So the um, the portion of allowing um, nursing care facilities in an R3 zone would apply uniformly throughout all R3. Councillor Evans was just making sure that everybody was aware that the motion that was following after that presentation, that was just a presentation to bring it to uh, the public. Um, the present, or the motion that was being passed was for the adoption of the, uh, or requesting the views for the subdivision bylaw, which is two separate items. So it's not gonna change R3 for the entire municipality, just that one property, or it's for the entire municipality? It will change the, the zone on that particular property. To so R3. that's one change. And then the second part to the change would be the addition of nursing care facilities to all R3 zones. So, so anybody so who had an R3 zone property, if the amendment is uh, successful, would have that option. Okay, so is it possible it can be approached? I'm just thinking process, does it have to be done for the entire municipality or can it be for one property? Like, is that an option going forward? Well, at this particular point in time, we have a have rezoning to. request underway. So that process will unfold in the next meetings that right. come about. But when the, the public meeting comes forward and then council discusses and makes their decision, would they have the option of a, of a one-off for that section of property rather than a blanket R3 change? Not with the way the bylaws written, or proposed bylaws written. Okay. Anyone else? Though? Deputy Mayor, um, just, just a quick question. <coughs> I needed some further clarification. Um, just because it might be precedent setting for future events, but with Mr. Burke's attendance at the 2019 Atlantic Planners Institute Conference in St. John's, um, I'm just wondering if it was a budgetary item or discretionary, if this was something that had been planned in advance and budgeted for, if it was under a discretionary fund? Uh, Mr. Beal? Yeah, uh, that would have been budgeted for within his uh, 2019 travel training and allowance budget uh, under uh, corporate projects. Thank you. And my second question is, and again, I'm just putting it out there because it could possibly be precedent setting and I do want to understand. Um, I believe Mr. Burke is actually the president of the New Brunswick chapter of the Atlantic Presenters um, Institute for the New Brunswick portion. Each province has their own. So I'm wondering if he was attending the conference in that capacity and also for the town of Sackville, was it a shared cost in his role as president or was it all with the town of Sackville um, compensating for those travel expenses? Mr. Burke. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the current president of the New Brunswick Association of Planners, uh, not presenters. So every, uh, every province has a, a professional planning uh, wing. And then overarching of that is the Atlantic Planners Institute, which represents each provincial affiliate. Um, I attended the New Brunswick Association of Planners uh, as a town of Sackville employee uh, and I am a professional planner. Uh, I continue to hold um, insurance and, and uh, uh, all the other things of my, along with my professional colleagues. Um, I didn't attend any of the um, uh, uh, Atlantic Planners Institute's meetings uh, during the conference. Our, our vice president attended those. <coughs> this conference was fully funded by the, the town of Sackville, which is why I thank them as part of my, my overall report. Uh, there are times when I am expected to attend uh, meetings, and if that's the case, typically what will happen is the Atlantic Planners Institute uh, will compensate for a hotel room to offset mm -hmm. some of those costs. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I appreciate that. Yeah. Those are my questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Quick question. Um, if there are trees in the town that are over top of the road, or if there are trees underneath um, streetlights, is that town responsibility, or is that MB Power? <laughs> Mr. Rankin. <laughs> I'm, ask, I'll, I'm asking, I, I'll, I'll give you an example why. So I was walking the other night, walking up King and across King to Baltzer, 
and there's a street light right at the at the corner of Balser and King, and I'm, there's probably many others in town, but um, the trees <coughs> are right up under, so like it really doesn't shine any light. So I didn't know whether I should call the town or MP Power. And then there's another street, another sorry, another tree right across King Street, um, which if we have another bad storm, I mean it could go in the street. But um, thank you, Wendy. Um, yeah, if you. I would definitely look at it, <coughs> and the reason I was kind of hesitating because depending on what needs to happen, if it's close to power lines, MB Power gets involved, so it's kind of a, a something that we would have to evaluate, and then we would determine <coughs> whether the town would um, do some trimming or whether we would have MB Power do the trimming, and typically if the town does trimming, we hire a professional that's uh, able to do that. So uh, if you want to pass an information on, uh, I, will, I will look into that and... Uh, See if we can't trim up. Okay, some so trees. I just send it to you directly? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, Wendy. Anyone else? My name's Paul Branscombe. Last week, when I attended the meeting, before that meeting, I was uh, quite optimistic what the verdict would be because I had received a call from Jamie Burke asking me questions about the application we had or the letter that we had sent to town, and I provided clarification. I come to the meeting last week, and there was confusion, or I left very confused because we were going to defeat it, or we were going to support it, or we we're going to stay it. When I come tonight, I'm totally disappointed because almost unanimously you defeated it. There is a, a, a tourism product that's going to be developed for ATVs. And out of four communities, you are the only community or municipality that said no. And I find that's not acceptable because I think the presentation, ATVs is a tourism product in this province, and I'm very sorry to say that this town does not understand it. You go up and ask the people up on the uh, intersection by McDonald's, ask them. See what they think of it. All I, th I can say is I'm very displeased with you. Thank you very much. <coughs> well, if there are no other questions, I'll... Seconder? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. <laughs>